Good morning, folks. I'm Matthew. Welcome to another year of EmacsCon. It's looking fantastic this year. Firstly, I have to apologize for my voice and occasional cough today. I'm currently recovering from a cold. Hopefully, it's not COVID or flu. So please bear with me today. Actually, this talk was supposed to be brought to you by Manati Lazy Cat, the author of LSP Bridge. But verbal English isn't Lazy Cat's strongest skill. And we're good friends as we maintain the Emacs application framework together. So here I am today, presenting to you this package. Welcome to my talk on LSP Bridge, a smooth app butter asynchronous LSP client. What is LSP? The first question is, what is LSP? For anyone who doesn't know here, LSP stands for Language Server Protocol. It is a set of protocols defined by Microsoft that provides smart features like autocomplete, go-to definition, documentation, etc. that can be implemented across different editors and IDEs. <clears throat> it was initially created for their Visual Studio Code product, then publicly shared with everyone. So there, there are language servers out there that implemented this protocol, and editors need to implement the same protocols to talk to the language servers in order to retrieve the necessary information. Emacs has two LSP clients already, the LSP mode and Eclat mode. Both implemented the protocols, and both are very good. Now comes the second question, of course. Given the LSP mode and egg lock, why do we need another LSP client? I used to use LSP mode all the time. And I have to say, I really appreciate Ivan Yanshovsky and the team's efforts. Also, I'd like to congratulate egg locks for making it to Emax 9. It's a great achievement. And these are fantastic packages. They're very mature and robust. However, with all due respect, both of the implementation are fundamentally limited by the single-threaded nature of Emacs. It is neither the fault of LSP mode nor Egglot. <clears throat> Although in recent years there have been improvements to Emacs core, such as native JSON support, there are still scenarios where Emacs clock for a brief second when processing large amounts of data as Emacs is processing everything in the single thread. This problem is especially apparent in some LSP servers that fits in tens of thousands of JSON data with every single key press. Additionally, the large amount of data sent by the LSP server, such as the completion candidates, the diagnostics, and documentation, they are temporarily stored in the Emacs memory which will trigger garbage collection very frequently. This also causes starting user experience. Increasing the GC count threshold helps, but doesn't eliminate the problem. <clears throat> For something like the LSP, the language servers need time to compute, and Emacs needs capacity to process and filter all the data coming from the language servers. A large code-based project with a slow language server that needs tens of thousands of JSON will significantly increase the time needed to process it. When we don't have a multi-thread, the single thread originally allocated for perhaps handling the user input will be used to process all the data instead. Don't even talk about the garbage collection along the way. The unfortunate truth is that the size of the code base and the efficiency of the language server is completely out of Emacs control. It is also out of both the LSP mode and Egglot's control. If there's an LSP client that can completely eliminate Star Train and provide a seamless feedback, that would be great, isn't it? However, we're vaguely talking about speed right now. What is considered fast? What is considered seamless? 
What we really mean when we say the current LSP implementation is slow. Let's first look at the problem fundamentally. <clears throat> we interact with Emacs through a keyboard. So what we perceive as a fast and smooth feedback completely depends on how long it takes for a keyboard input to display on the Emacs buffer. From a pure graphical perspective, we need a minimum of 24 frames per second, the standard in the media industry, for us humans to perceive something as seamless. Say we need 25 frames per second. This means if we divide 1000 milliseconds by 25, we only have approximately 40 second millisecond window for the response time to spare. Even if we relax the constraint a bit more, on average, a typist takes about 100 to 200 milliseconds between typing each character. So as long as we see a response within this type frame, it is tolerable. However, using a slow language server on a large code base easily exceeds the 100 millisecond mark and sometimes takes more than 200 milliseconds and inevitably will cause an inconsistent delay for the end user. At this point, someone will want to point out that nobody is going to type at the maximum pace all the time. That's right. Frankly speaking, most of my time spent at programming is not writing code, but staring at a screen, thinking about how to write the code. However, we do when we do actually type, maybe only a sentence, a variable name, a keyword, or maybe just performing key binding shortcuts. That's when we want to see our input feedback immediately. We've already spent so much time thinking about how to write. We don't want to waste any more time waiting for Emacs to process and show us what we've written maybe half a second ago. Otherwise, the frustration will build up. In the past two years of EmacsConf, I talked about the Emacs application framework, a project that extended Emacs Lisp to Python, Qt, and JavaScript ecosystems. The EF project specializes in improving the graphical and multimedia capabilities of Emacs through other languages. It was a great success. <clears throat> It demonstrated the endless possibilities of Emacs by taking advantage of the strength and other ecosystems. If anyone's interested for more information on EAF, please see the EAF repo and refer to my talks from EmacsConf 2020 and 2021. The EAF was created by Manati LazyCat as well. So he thought if there's a way to design an LSP client similar to EAF that takes the advantage of Python's multi-threading, you will be able to solve our problem. Conveniently, EAF had already done most of the groundwork and demonstrated the possibility of cooperating Lisp and Python using the Emacs RPC effectively. LSP Bridge has several goals in mind. Firstly, Performance is the number, number one priority. Secondly, we use Python multi-threading to bypass the aforementioned bottlenecks of a single-threaded Emacs. Thirdly, we want to provide a simple solution that requires minimal setup for someone who just wants to have a fast autocomplete system in Emacs. <laughs> This means LSP Bridge does not intend and will not implement the entire LSP protocol, which is a vastly different approach than a solution like LSP mode. We do not want to compete this way. We also believe that some of the LSP protocols features are unnecessary, or we already have better solutions in the Emacs ecosystem, such as TreeSeater for syntax highlighting. So we will not reinvent this wheel. Ultimately, we want to provide the fastest, better, smooth, and performant LSP client out of the box. Design. 
Now let's look at the design architecture diagram. As you can see, it is split into top half and bottom half. The top is the design for a single file model, and the bottom half is for a project model. We make this distinction because we don't want a new user to be troubled on choosing a project root directory as the first impression to LSP before even starting to write code. From a new user's perspective, they just installed this package, and all they are expecting is using a smart autocomplete system. What does root directory even mean in this context? So we make the decision for them based on whether this file is part of a Git repository. Oftentimes, we write code in its own standalone file. This is extremely common for scripting languages like Bash or Python. So in the single file model, LSP Bridge will start a dedicated LSP server for this particular file based on file type. And every file corresponds to an LSP server. So each server doesn't interfere with one another. The project model instead will have every file of the same type under the same project share one server. We believe this is a positive trade-off for user experience. The bridge internally implemented two main threads, the request thread and the other is the response thread. The request thread is used to handle all the requests coming from Emacs. It does not answer immediately. This is important because Emacs doesn't need to wait for any response under any reason. Even if the server is buggy or died out, it shouldn't matter to the performance of Emacs. The response thread is used to handle the response coming from LSP servers. After retrieving a response, regardless of the JSON size, it sends to its own thread for computation, such as candidate filtering and rename. Once the computation is finished, it will determine if this information is expired. If not, then push it to Emacs. Next side. When it receives the LSP information, it only needs to determine the course of action, either pop-up completion, jump to definition, renaming action, or show references and show documentation. You see, from a user, all LSP bridge doing is these four things. The user doesn't need to care about anything else like a complicated language server protocols. Python side caches heavy data such as candidate documentation and diagn diagnostics. We process as much server data as possible in Python and only pass to Emacs as little data as possible, so it doesn't clog the Emacs thread and triggers garbage collection. This design is critical because all Emacs needs to do now is sending LSP requests to LSP Bridge. It doesn't wait for a response. It simply knows what to do when there is a response. So the user's input immediately displays on the buffer well within the 40 millisecond window. And in the meantime, the user can continue to type if he doesn't need the help from LSP right away. It fundamentally resolves the starting problem. OK, now I want to talk about the ACM mode. ACM mode stands for the Asynchronous Completion Menu. It is a completion framework that currently bundled with LSP Bridge, designed to accommodate for the asynchronous nature of LSP servers. <clears throat> it is a replacement for the built-in CAPF, short for completion at point functions, used in almost everywhere, including company mode and curve mode. Yes, we unfortunately reinvented a very fundamental wheel. But no, it wasn't an easy decision. However, we still believe it's worth it. LSP Bridge initially used company mode, then moved on to curve mode for a while. 
But eventually, Lizika determined that it is much more painful to write a lot of workaround code to force LSP Bridge to handle CAPF nicely than to just fork Kofu, remove all the CAPF code, and write a new completion framework from the remainings. Performance likes to store the entire candidate list when looping when looking up candidate annotations. It needs to search through the entire candidate list first, then use the candidate as a key to search for the actual information. This process will be repeated every single time when drawing the completion menu. This is truly an intensive computing task for Emacs to handle. On top of that, the existing CAPF frameworks assume the candidate list, which is retrieved from the LSP server, to be ready and finalized in place when the completion pop-up occurred. However, given the design of LSP Bridge, Emacs will not sit there and wait for the server to respond. Instead, the response thread may feed Emacs data whenever it's ready. This makes CAPF almost impossible to form a finalized candidate list doing pop-up. The complete reasons regarding why CAPF is incompatible, complicated, and deserves maybe its own talk. LazyCat wrote an entire blog post detailing his reasonings, while Crowfo's author Daniel Mendler, aka Minad, also done his own investigations and experiments, and reached a common conclusion as well. For anyone interested, I pasted the links to the corresponding post here. Therefore, keep in mind that LSP Bridge can only use ACM mode to work nicely. So please disable other completion frameworks like Company and Coreful before trying LSP Bridge. By designing ACM with asynchronous server response in mind, this unlocks LSP Bridge project's potential to provide completions from almost any backends. ACM has blended all the backends together and configured a priority to display the important completion results like LSP before other backends. It can also complete LSP too. Top 9, ellipse symbols, yas snippets, and even English dictionaries and much more. As long as you have the backends installed, they all work out of the box. Although LSP Bridge is a relatively new package with just over seven months old, it is already a success. As of December of 2022, we have 67 contributors making more than 1,000 comments and more than 600 stars on GitHub too. LSP Bridge is, <clears throat> is easily extensible, so we encourage developing developments from other people as well. LSP Bridge is another successful example of extending Emacs Lisp with Python. And just like EAF, it demonstrated the potential Emacs can achieve when we jump out of the Lisp-only world and embrace other ecosystems. Recently, LazyCat created a package called Blink Search that leveraged similar ideas by an asynchronous search framework, as well as a package called Dino Bridge that extended Emacs Lisp with Dino JavaScript TypeScript runtimes. Please check it out. If consider, please join the development too. Thanks. This is the entirety of my presentation. Thanks for joining. Me and Lazy Cat will be available to ask questions on IRC and Etherpad. Have a great conference.